How's it going, everybody? Love Limb Diecast, Diecast All Episode 48, Big 48. That is where we're up to today. Not a giant haul today, but a decent haul nonetheless. I did buy a case of these 56th anniversary models. This is number one of six. This is the Tuned 83 Silverado. That is the mix on the back. The Ryzen Express is the uh, Chase the Treasure Hunt because there's only one in the case. Uh, which is absolutely ridiculous, but it, it is what it is. Uh, this theme has been out for a little bit. Um, I have not found it in retail stores, so I went ahead and I purchased a case uh, from JCar. So there is the tuned uh, 83 Silverado. They are goldish, like a pearl gold uh, chrome interior. Looks pretty good with like a like a really nice teal uh, on the outside. These actually look pretty good. I really like the. Uh, Color combinations on these ones looks pretty good. Very, very shiny. Very nice. There is the deets on the base. S24 is the date code for those gas. So we'll throw our Silverado in there. Looks pretty decent. All right, number two of the mix. I also like the uh, embossing on the car. Looks pretty good. Uh, this is the Toyota Land Cruiser. So this is a casting that I don't have every single one that they've released, but I have pretty much most of them. Um, not something that we really like uh, chase down here at Level M, but uh, if we come across them, we will pick them up. Uh, it's a good casting. I like it. I like the pickup truck back on it. looks good. Details are pretty nice on this one. Uh, no uh, front rear prints, just side prints on there. looks pretty good. It has a little bit of a little bit of rake going on there. Like the uh, super shiny chrome base looks super good. That is the uh, only contrasting color. It's just the base itself. So you really don't see too much of it. You do have Toyota embossed in the back. Looks pretty good. But uh, definitely nowhere near the amount of uh, gold rose uh, chrome as that uh, 83 Silverado. All right, number three of six. This is the 21 Ford Bronco, 2021 Ford Bronco. Uh, this has been in about uh, six releases thus far. Uh, they've done a five-pack version as well. This was a new casting a few years ago. This one gets a little bit of additional print on the top, which is pretty nice. Does say 56 on there. Details on the side look pretty good. Does say Bronco. Uh, no prints on the back, but uh, nice chrome spare tire cover looks good. The entire interior is chrome, so that tells you uh, all those pieces, what they make it up. Looks pretty good. Chrome interior uh, makes for the chrome front end. Does say Bronco on there, which is pretty nice. And uh, there's the deets on the base. Looks pretty good. Do like that one. Definitely a casting we collect. Uh, definitely like that one a lot. Looks pretty good with those five spokes on there. All right, we're going to jump to number five because I left the Mercury Comet Cyclone. Uh, just not my bag of tea. So I do not have the gasser. Uh, not, a, not a huge fan of drag racing, so... I left that one, but did pick up this one, the Custom 70 Honda N600 for number five of six. Let's get this guy out of there. This one just continues the same thing, but looks pretty good. Chrome base on this one as well. Makes for nice chrome bumpers. I like the look of the chrome bumpers. Looks pretty good, chilling there. The details on the side are pretty universal. Um little bit of print here and there for the black uh, but they kind of differ as far as like the uh, Hot Wheels uh, direction of the logo I guess you can say it looks pretty good that one looks not too bad this just has your standard five spokes on it I'm not sure if that's an error there on the top or if that's supposed to be on the casting but uh, I'm gonna say that's probably a little error piece not a big deal uh, hopefully if uh, worried if I mess with that for too long uh, in its lifetime that might break off of there though all right, and then there is, of course, is your chase piece, uh, the quote-unquote chase piece, which is ridiculous. Uh, this is number six of six, of course, the Ryzen Express. Um, I absolutely love this casting, such a cool casting. It's majority plastic, but that's perfectly fine. Um, this one looks pretty good. I like the details on the side, tons and tons of that pearl gold. Looks fantastic. It's the whole top of this model, just ridiculously shiny. Just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And then, of course, just the teal for the base. That is all the metal that there is right there on the bottom. So not very metal, much very on this one at all. And there's no interior on this model either. But that one looks really good. I actually really, really like that. I don't know if this guy's going to fit in there. 
sort of sort of fits in there. It's close enough. All right, so moving on to Hot Wheels 2024 D case. D, letter D. Um, now, I don't have all of them. I'm missing, actually, probably some of the bigger hitters. I am missing the R33 Skyline Godzilla. I'm missing the Porsche Keychain. Um, and then the regular Treasure Hunt and the Super, which is the uh, Mercedes 500 in red. Uh, unfortunately, those were all gone. So, crack this guy open. This is our 73 Jeep. Brand new deco for this one. This was a new casting last year. This one in K&N in blue. A little bit of extra print there on the top. Looks pretty good. The two-tone uh, interior, uh, two separate pieces of interior. Get that nice break for the spare tires on there. Looks pretty good. Get your gray front end there. So very clever use of the parts to get a lot of color breaks in this casting. So that one looks pretty good. It's nice and beefy. It's big. The day code on this, S44. So we still have yet to in, hit the end of... Uh, 2023 as far as manufacturing goes, which is interesting. All right, brand new casting for 2024, debuting in the DK's 2023 Ram 1500. This is literally the TRX. They just don't call it the TRX. I don't know why. It doesn't make any sense. Why not just call it the TRX? But in, they just call it the Ram 1500, uh, which is fine. I just don't understand why you don't call it the TRX. It's literally, it's literally the TRX. Um, I mean, you can tell... 100% it's the TRX. It's got all the body work on it. Big, huge exhaust out the back. Got your RAM embossed on there. Looks pretty good. The uh, roll bar, which is uh, an accessory you can get on the TRX. Um, you can also get that on a standard RAM too. But And then there is the prints in the front. Looks pretty good. The uh, There is RAM embossed in the casting. Unfortunately, this particular one, the RAM is offset from the embossment. So it doesn't look good. I will uh, pursue another one. Uh, but this was the only one that they had at the time. So certainly wasn't going to leave this in there. There is your base deets for this brand. Spanking new casting. That one looks pretty good. It's uh, pretty beefy. Uh, and it looks a million times better than the other Ram 1500 casting that came out a few years ago. Um, the thing I don't like about it is that one has a little bit of that Carolina squat, which is just dumb. Uh, I don't know why they gave it a squat. You can see it squats. It's just, it's not, that needs to be fixed. Um, so if I get another one, uh, you best believe I'm going to chop it open and uh, make some changes to it. All right, another brand new casting for 2024, our Vespa 90 SS Super Spur 1966 for Factory Fresh. Uh, this one is pretty cool. It is uh, another very clever use of parts uh, to get the spare tire in there. So that spare tire looks pretty good. You'll see there's a teeny little bit of black plastic right there. Uh, to cover all of the black plastic in the model, which includes the taillight, the seat, and the top of the tank. The handlebars are a separate piece. A little bit of print on the front. Looks pretty good. Does say Vespa. That's pretty nice. You can see how the casting is two pieces molded together. That is a new wheel as well. A new small motorcycle wheel. Multi-spoke as well. It's really hard to see the multi-spoke, but uh, there you go. Looks pretty good. It's kind of like a four-spoke, like four double-spoke. Um, this thing is actually super, super cool. I'm, I'm really impressed um, at how well uh, Hot Wheels was able to get this casting done uh, for their just their basic range. It also includes a little bit of a kickstand uh, so that it sits there. That looks absolutely fantastic. That is absolutely super cool. I mean, that that is that might be one of the best of the mix uh, by far. I think that one is super, super cool. All right, recolor of our Land Rover Series 2 did debut last year in a green color. This is the first recolor in gray with some yellow, orange, and red striping on the side. They still do have the surfboard there on the top, decoed up, which looks good. Looks good for sure. A little bit of print on there as well. Right there on the windshield part. It is ultra, ultra tiny. Does say Land Rover, I believe. And look at that, they even put a little bit of print on that spare tire ring, which is really, really nice. I'm uh, really impressed. That's a nice little touch. A little bit of print on, uh, well, no print at all. That's just the casting change. That grill is part of the interior. So no prints on the front and no prints on the rear. But I think this casting is super cool. Metal base on this one, metal body. So it's got a decent amount of metal for the size of it. It's pretty cool. Like with the steering or the uh, windshield falling down, looks pretty good or set down, I should say. Here we go. 
All right, Fantasy Casting, Hot Wheels 4-Track, HW 4-Track. This was a new casting, I believe, last year. Um, I think this has only been in one deco. It was a Hot Wheels Racing deco. I think last year uh, it may have debuted in 2022 in Hot Wheels Racing deco. I may have uh, additional one maybe in the alternate color, which was mainly white instead of blue, potentially. Uh, but it's a fantasy casting, so sometimes you know it's not exactly the number one thing you remember. Uh, just print on the top to say Hot Wheels graphics, all that good stuff like that. Pretty standard fare here, Hot Wheels on the top. Some pretty good quality prints, especially on the top of the wing there. It's a really nice print. Um, this is a track car. So you can see there is your track logo to indicate. It is a track car. It does have a matte gray base, which is pretty nice. So 2022. So yes, this did debut in 2022. So I probably have two colors of that in the collection potentially. But again, it's a, it's a fantasy, so not a lot of people are into that. Uh, another fantasy casting, but actually looks pretty good. This is the Glory Chaser. This was a super last year in Gulf Deco. This one is in orange. This one is a very cool casting because the seats and the windshield are actually one piece. You can see the seats are clear, which looks pretty good. Uh, there are also lensed headlights in it, which is a nice touch. Some front prints on there, and this says number 32. Just has Goodyear on the side. Really nothing special going on there. Again, just uh, standardized stuff here. It's not necessarily a track car because you can see the chin does go down pretty pretty far. But uh, this is a very, very good uh, generic for a kind of a classic Roadster, um, which I think is a pretty cool mix. So put that one up there. That is, uh, I think that's the third, third color release for that guy. All right, new color release for the Pagani and by far the best wheel that they could have possibly put on this Pagani is that new lace wheel. Uh, this one in race day in maroon. Look how good, oops, sorry about that. Look how good this looks with those lace wheels. Such a good, good, good wheel choice. Um, absolutely perfect for the Zonda. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Looks fantastic. So you got your Zonda R on the sides. There is no print on the back. You do have Pagani there on the top of the wing, which is pretty nice. And a little bit of print there on the front. Some matte black with some red that looks pretty good. I like that detail. There's no uh, headlights specifically or anything like that, but that wheel looks so good. Looks so, so good. That is such a proper wheel uh, for this car. Um, it would have looked really good in maybe a, maybe a, uh, make up. Maybe a black, maybe, but uh, I still think it looks really, really good. That is fantastic. I'm really, really happy about that. Definitely the best wheel uh, for the main line by far. Uh, bar none. All right, Compact King 73 Honda Civic Custom. This is the third color. This was a new casting, I believe, at the beginning of 2023. Um, did debut in green. It was recolored in orange. Now we do have this race version in yellow. This is a cool casting. Just comes with the five spokes. Um, it did come with that three spoke, that new three spoke wheel last year. Looks pretty good. 73 on the side. Decos look pretty good. Definitely has nice racing flair to it. Got your Motul on there. I definitely like that. Looks pretty good. There is the base deets. So 2022. So could have been uh could have been very early 2023. Maybe it could have been 2022. I don't know. They get kind of lost in all these uh, Hot Wheels castings nowadays. But uh, we'll throw that guy right there. Try to get him centered a little bit. The D case is a big case. It's a, it's a big case. We'll just put it that way. All right, another generic. This is the latest uh, street wiener for Hot Wheels Let's Race. It is, of course, the hot dog with the grill in the back. They have done a bunch of decos for this one. It's kind of a, kind of a freestyle um, generic. Uh, so basically, there's the spatula in the front. The base is the spatula, which is interesting. Uh, the sides here are like the... Uh, like that, uh, you know, paper bowl or whatever you'd get when you ordered a hot dog. Of course, there's a hot dog. Deck it up with uh, mustard and ketchup and stuff like that. And then the grill is in the back. That is the grill section there. Um, and then, of course, you can always close the grill. Sometimes they snap. Sometimes they don't. But the idea, there we go. The idea is that it would snap and stay there. But it looks pretty cool. Pretty ridiculous engine off the back. I like the details of that. The base details look decent. It is silver. Nice, brilliant silver, and then, of course, green wheels on it. I think is a relatively good contrast, so 
Throw that guy up in there. Just something new, something different. All right, third color for the Alfa Romero GT V6 3.0. This one debuted last year for sure. Came in red to start with, then it was recolored in white in more of a traditional Alfa Romero Italian deco. This one is a little bit more streetcar style. Like the prints on the side, looks good. Very simple blue, I'm sorry, uh, red and black. Really like those details, like the wheels. The arrow blades are perfect. Just the grill area is printed up with the Alfa Romero logo in there. Super, super tiny details in there. Do apologize about that. Ooh. Just doesn't want to focus, does it? There we go. Uh, but no prints on the back, unfortunately. But uh, I don't think this one had prints on the back on the first two releases either. But uh, I really like that casting. I think that casting is super cool. Um, and it's got a really nice size to it. Um, I think that looks pretty good. So there we go. All right, brand spanking new casting. Here's the funny thing. If you look at this casting, it does not say brand new for 2024 because technically it's not. Uh, this was in that, uh, Alpha, um, ah, what was it, that uh, DeLorean and the classic DeLorean 2-pack from Mattel Creations. Um, so that is technically where it debuted. So I guess that's why they can't call this brand new for 2024, although... Uh, that was the premium version. This is just a regular version. There also is a red edition at Target. If you go to Target, it is in black, which is weird. It's not red. doesn't have any red on it. Uh, but this one from Green Speed does debut with white. I do have that DeLorean 2-pack, although I did not uh, crack it open or nothing because I think it looks cool in the display like it should be. There is some prints in the back. Looks pretty good. Some details on there. does say DeLorean there on the, t on the uh, brake uh, bar there, the brake light bar. Uh, plastic top, interior, uh, plastic top. There is an interior in there. Looks pretty good. Some simple prints on the front as well. It says DeLorean. That actually looks pretty good. Details coming in pretty good as well. 2023, there is the uh, base codes and stuff like that. So very interesting that it does not say that it is a new model, but uh, it is the first time being released in the general retail masses. All right, new color for the Custom Camaro 1968. Custom Camaro. This one looks pretty good. It is uh, similar to the one that debuted last year. This was a new casting last year uh, in kind of a greenish kind of color. I dig this casting. I dig this a lot. Um, I really like this style. I like this ridiculous, like, mechanical, over-the-top, um, like, just beyond ridiculous build. Uh, just super industrial type build. Um, I just like this this style a lot. Um, I've always said if uh, somebody crashed into my my charger, which I would, I would be severely depressed for my whole life. But uh, if I was going to rebuild it, I would do something like this. I think this is super super cool, and of course this casting is ridiculously cool as well. And uh, definitely glad to uh, add another color uh, to the mix. There we go. All right, speaking of DeLorean, yes, we get another release of just the standard. Back to the Future DeLorean. This one is the hover mode. This one looks okay. It is a matte gray. So I know for the people that uh, have collected this casting since it was new, uh, along with the other versions of the Back to the Future, you'd be happy to notice that it is very, very matte gray, very matte wrinkle gray, um, which looks fantastic. This looks really, really good. It's not, uh, it's not uh, accurate to the uh, source material, but it looks really, really good as a die cast. Uh, and this thing has print all the way around. So it's got all the wires and stuff on the side. Got your grill there on the front. And then, of course, you saw the taillight print. So this thing has full prints all the way around, which looks really, really good. There is the plate details on there. Uh, no uh, details for uh, Mr. Fusion or anything like that because that would be a little bit too premium. And then, of course, just little tiny wheels on the bottom. That's just kind of the way it rolls, literally, uh, which looks kind of cool. So... Glad that one is a lot different than I thought when I first got it. I, I, I thought about just leaving it there, but I said, no, I'll, I'll take it. All right, you JDM and Honda guys, you'll be very happy to know the EG has made itself to the basic line. Uh, so you can scoop these up for a buck twenty all day long rather than relying on premium versions to uh, drop around the 92 Civic EG. So pretty nice to see that uh, Hot Wheels is bringing some premium castings into the mainline. 
um, and I'm sure they're going to be modified a little bit. This one looks pretty accurate though. This one looks uh, pretty much exactly like the premium one. It is assembled a little bit. There is a uh, uh, post here in the back, but you can see that it's a uh, 2021 Mattel. So this is in fact uh, the same uh, casting as the premium version, which looks pretty good. This one does have full front prints on there uh, for the headlights and the Honda symbol. Get that to show up a little bit. There we go. Looks pretty good. And then there is just your Honda on the side. Comes with the lace wheels. Um, right hand drive. Not a uh, not a Honda guy. Not a JDM guy. But uh, I like die cast. And I think that is a super, super cool addition uh, for sure. All right. Still rolling. D-Case is enormous. Uh, 87 Audi Quattro. Brand spanking new for 2024. This is not... This is not a standard version of the rally car. This is the road car. The rally car has a shorter wheelbase. So um, it's a dead giveaway right from the beginning. Some people are like, oh, they just released the road car or the rally car with the road car deco. No, this is a brand new casting uh, entirely. There are no prints on the back. Unfortunately, you can see this is the standard wheelbase for the Audi Quattro, which looks good. I love the fading uh, Audi rings there on the side. Super cool detail. Full prints on the front look fantastic. Audi Quattro. Um, I actually picked up uh, two of these. There was Luckily, there was two of them. Um, and so I just kind of picked the one that had the best uh, headlight print on there. But this one looks fantastic. I like the details on there. There is the base. AG7 Audi Quattro. Looking very, very good. I'm digging that one. I'm digging that one a lot. That one is definitely considered off-road. We're going to put it over there with our off-road trucks. All right. This one is not from the DKs. This actually debuted in the C case, but... Uh, I did not find this in the CK, so I found it in the carryover DKs. This is the 55 Chevy Bel Air Gasser. Uh, again, I'm not a big fan of the Gassers, but I really like the deco on this. I think it looks super cool. It says the collector on the side. Uh, Hot Wheels reverse rake. Uh, there's actually a theme for that. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just call it Hot Wheels Carolina Squat, but uh, it's all good. It's all good. Details look pretty good on this. I like the color. It's like a burnt orange copper. It's actually really, really nice. The wheel choice is fantastic. Those kind of cool classics wheels from back in the day. I really like this one. Like I said, I'm not a I'm not a gasser fan, but the deco on that one is just is super cool. It's just super cool. All right, now I can't remember if I got this in the C case or if this is new to the D case. I don't remember. Um, so I bought this anyways. We're gonna crack it open. If I end up having two, then so be it. This is the mod rod. Uh, have a ton of versions of this one. I've also been lucky enough to get a couple of the ones that have been done for international markets. They're a little bit different ones here and there. Uh, this one looks pretty good. It says 24 Hot Wheels R Cars. The more I look at this, the more I think that I definitely have this one. But again, if I do, then I guess I got two of them. Not a big deal. Just a, just a dollar car. It's not like I'm buying two tarmacs or nothing. But it uh, looks pretty good. I like the gold chrome engine. looks really nice. The wheel, white wheels are a little bit weird but uh, they contrast relatively well. And then just a red base on there, which is interesting. So kind of stick him to the side since, since I might have that one. All right, this debuted... Uh, this See, this is where I get really impressed sometimes by uh, not only retailers, but manufacturers, because today is the March 1st, okay? And this is the Leap Year car. Um, this case actually started showing up ne near me uh, a couple days ago. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive uh, to get market, a product to market that close. I'm really, really impressed. Uh, so this is the Roger Dodger. This is, of course, the Leap Year car for this year. Very, very cool looking. I don't normally uh, collect this one, even though it is a Charger, or I'm sorry, a Challenger, you know, Dixie Challenger and all that stuff. Uh, and I'm a big Mopar guy, but uh, I really don't do much of the Roger Dodger. But I thought this one looked super cool. I like the red engine in there. Looks really, really cool. Got 29 on the side. Got your gray and stuff like that. Nice chrome base on there. Looks pretty good. So 1979 to 2015 uh, Mattel. So they are still using the basic, uh, you know, casting, core casting itself, which is really impressive uh, for like, you know, 50 years now. Um, and then the last one I picked up, again, I'm not a JDM guy, but I thought this one looked super cool. I really love that, like, cool classics wheel, that five-spoke wheel. I, I just... That wheel looks good on like pretty much everything. Mazda RX-7. This one is in Japanese police livery for Hot Wheels first response with gold print for the foil. 
Um, really digging this one. Again, not a huge fan of this casting. Not a huge fan of JDM stuff, but this one is just rocking. This, this casting was used as a super uh, four or five years ago, um, which was pretty cool and orange. So never found that super, but it was made as a super. And then just a little bit of print there on the top. and does say Mazda right there in the grill area. Well, what would be the grill, but that is the uh, top of the bumper. Looks pretty good. Black interior on that one, so that one is pretty, 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 pretty lit. All right, no more Hot Wheels, but uh, I got some other cool stuff. Uh, so I got one green light. This is from their Diecast Blast event, their 2023 uh, Diecast Blast event that they did at their location, Indianapolis, Indiana. They did it at an event center that was uh, local to their shop or whatever, and they had collectors and stuff show up, and they did their own little custom car for it and all that stuff. So this is 100% Code 1 factory produced, uh, all that good stuff like that, just like anything else that you get from Greenlight. This is the International Harvester. International Harvester Scout. 1970. So we'll pull this guy out. There we go. Be a little bit gentle with it. Get the, get the plastic out of here. This one looks pretty good. Again, that roll bar on the top. A little bit rough. Look at that. Look at that. It's already broken. Broken right out of the uh, package. Um, you guys remember I did pick up that one from um, the All Terrain series, the newest one, the one that this casting debuted in, and it was also broken. So I am now two for two on this casting of that roll bar being broken. So um, green light. Hopefully they will uh, figure that out. Uh, but the rest of this looks good. I love the green tow hooks in the front. That is a super cool little touch. Full prints and stuff on this one. The green wheels are fantastic. They kept the uh, deco to a super minimum. Just says green light on the side. Nothing fancy. Really, really nice. Looks really good. Super, super cool. I, I just I, the, the green tow hooks are super cool. They're just super, super cool. But this is a really good casting. They did a really good job on it. Um, this one does not appear to be numbered. Oh, it is numbered. Let's see if I can get that to show up. It is at the top here. So that is number 220. I don't remember how many was in there. I threw the packaging away. Uh, 576 pieces. They only made 576 pieces of those. Um, I mean, I bought that like a normal green light. It's like 10 bucks. So that's crazy. They only made 576 of those. Very interesting. All right. One of the items that I hadn't quite pulled out from my uh, Australia haul that I got about, I don't know, close to a month now. Um, I did get up this one. Um, Jackson has bestowed me quite a few V8 supercars. Um, I really dig these. I can't get these here in the U.S. because obviously they don't race in the U.S. This one is the Holden VF Commodore for Red Bull. I do have about, uh, I want to say about, this one probably makes like seven or eight um, that, I've, that I've got from him. Here's the back side of our blade to hopefully get the flap out of there. There we go. Oh, I ripped it. I knew it. Oh, come on, man. Oh, my God, dude. So ridiculous to get that out of there. Um, I do keep these boxes, by the way. Most boxes I don't keep, but these ones I do. Um, I do display this as well. So we're just going to pull this guy out of here. Uh, it is uh, 164 scale, as you'd expect. Nice uh, blister pack box in there. If I can get the clamshell piece back in there. I'm on the struggle, struggle bus right now. There we go. Get that guy back in there. Set it to the side. There is the VF Commodore. The prints and stuff look fantastic. It's all decoed up. There is no interior on this model. So it's more of a display thing rather than a, like a collector model, I guess you can say. The tires are rubber. The base looks pretty good. A lot of details on there with the side exhaust. Big, huge wing out the back. I think it's hilarious. It's got like exhaust ports in the back, but it dumps out of the side. The prints and stuff look good. The side mirrors and stuff on there. Got Caltex and stuff on there. Maverick. Looks pretty good. Red Bull. Number one, wind cup. But um, yeah, there's no interior. Very interesting. Very interesting. I don't remember if my other ones have interiors or not, but look at that. I mean, just look how cool that looks. Like V8 supercars are super cool. These are way cooler than NASCARs by far. Uh, they just they just are. They just are. So Let's put this guy on that side so you can sort of kind of see it on the screen a little bit. Sort of kind of. I know. 
Uh, let's see what else we got. I got some wellies. Um, I actually got quite a few wellies. Again, these have come from sources uh, outside the U.S. because um, I don't have uh, a source for welly in the U.S. Um, and the wellies are not sold in the U.S. But anyways, this is the Audi Quattro. Now you'll see this is the short wheelbase version. This is the actual rally car body. This is not the standard wheelbase. So I'm going to crack this guy open. Get him out of there. There is Welly. Welly makes absolutely fantastic castings. They look so good. Very minimal details, like just little print, but they look so good. Um, I really like the details. That is a separate section for the taillights. The taillights are not printed up or anything, but they are there. Looks really good. A little bit of uh, print there. It says Audi Quattro. There is the base deeds for the Welly. Very good quality parts. Very good quality construction. It is very robust. It is very beefy. Uh, these are two-piece wheels, but they're not rubber. They are plastic, but they are two-piece wheels. And a little bit of print on there on the top for the uh, uh, windshield wipers, which looks really, really good. So we'll throw him right there in the front. This is the Suzuki Jimny. Super, super cool casting here. This one is 160th scale. Well, they all say, I think they all say they're 160th scale. Uh, this one is giant, though, because the Jimny is tiny in real life. So this casting is enormous, but it looks super, super good. Again, two-piece wheel, but they are plastic. It's kind of a soft plastic, kind of an interesting kind of plastic. There is the base detail on this one. Looks good. Look at all the detail on the base. It's incredible. Basic prints on it, but they look super, super good. This is the most popular Jimny color pretty much ever because it's just super, super cool. Details on the front. Good old Suzuki Jimny. Look how big that is compared to that Audi Quattro. It's enormous. It's an enormous casting. All right, this one is super, super cool. This is the Pajero, the two-door Pajero. Um, some people will be like, no, that's a, that's a Montero. It's, uh, no, it's a Pajero. Uh, we got the Montero here in the U.S., but not the Pajero. Uh, this one looks really, really good. Basic detail on the front. Just uh, some white print for the headlights. Mitsubishi symbol in there as well. Big, huge five spokes on there, just like the other one. Again, basic prints on the back. Looks excellent. Really, really, really good. This is a hook assembly model. Those two, uh, you know, kind of reflector light areas right there are part of the base. Look at all the details on the base. Looks so, so good. Like, how can we not get Welly here in the U.S.? I mean, we get like 124th scale Welly, but we don't get 160th, 164th scale Welly, which is really, really frustrating. All right, I pulled these out. Uh, I actually got these like over a year ago, and I meant to crack these on the channel. Never got around to it. These are more wellies, so we'll just go ahead and get right into it. Don't remember what this one is. I think it's a Renault. So this is the Renault Clio RS. Left-hand drive on this one. Look at the deets on the front. It looks fantastic. Now, you got to remember, these are considered like the cheap cars. These are considered not the cheapest but these are considered a cheap brand, like a sub Hot Wheels and Matchbox brand. Um, and I think that they are just as good quality as both Hot Wheels and Matchbox. Um, the castings always look a little bit weird, but I assure you when you hold them in your hand, uh, they are 100% just as good quality as those two uh, manufacturers for sure. All right, Porsche Boxster in white, the convertible. Crack him out of there. Some debris out of there. It was a pretty rough card. This one, the wheels look a little bit small on it, but that's okay. There's your base deets right there. It looks pretty good. We used to get some Welly castings uh, from some other off brands. They were kind of subleased, I guess you can say, for some of the cheaper brands here in the U.S., but that doesn't happen anymore. That one looks pretty good. So park that guy like rat cha. Uh, this one is super, super cool. This is the Toyota Corolla. So I'm really stoked about this. This one comes with a different wheel. This is a, a, a six-spoke, a smaller six-spoke. Kind of dusty on there. There you go. Toyota Corolla 418. So if that was the manufacturer day, holy cow, this thing's pretty old. Going on uh, almost uh, basically six years old. A little bit of scuff on the front of the casting, which is just unfortunately a uh, factory error. But that's all right. This one is right-hand drive, so very appropriate there. Looks good. I like the wheels. Again, they're they're two-piece wheels, but uh, they look really, really good. They look like they're premium wheels. Basic prints on the back looks pretty good. I like the details. 
such a good good casting of such a, just a regular car. Just a regular car. Just a regular everyday vehicle. All right, I got a couple more. Uh, these ones are in box, so we'll just leave these ones in the box. But that is the SL. Looks pretty good. Again, 160th scale. There is your little Daimler logo on the back. The Diecast Company in L. I don't know where these came from, but uh, I did buy this one here in the U.S. So that one is a pretty cool addition. I think we'll kind of put that guy on the side here. Just a little bit. Just in the back. Uh, another one here. This is the Aston Martin. I think this is the DBS. Uh, or, or maybe the DB9. Uh, kind of the uh, the race version. It will look super good, dude. It's in red. Just like the other one. It's like a dark red. It looks good, though. 160th. Well eaten necks. Uh, you in the U.S. might recognize that. We do get them. Uh, like I said, it's 124 scale, but we don't get the 160th-ish scale stuff, which is a bummer. And then I got one more here. This is a much, much newer release. Uh, it is released under this Wonder Kids uh, line, I guess you can call it. Uh, but it is still Welly. See Welly on there. These are taped. This is the Lotus. This is the MC20. That is looking good. Looks good in blue. It does have, um, I think that might actually be a one-piece wheel now, but I think that wheel looks really, really good, actually. Um, this one I also bought in the U.S. as well. Um, I think I got those for, like, maybe three bucks a piece or something, which is which is good. I'm pretty happy about that. All right, very last item in, last in the entire haul is right here. This is the latest uh, 110 Defender from Tarmac in yellow. So we will be very gentle and... Get the plastic cut so that we can take a look at this guy. Hopefully. There we go. All right. Get the plastic off of there. We'll pull him out. Um, I haven't been buying too many Tarmex, uh for a while now because... Um, I don't know. They're just kind of redundant for me. I still get like the castings that I want, like this one. Um, and I still would get like the Dodge van, but I'm still waiting for the next color to come out. This one looks, wow, this one looks good. All right, let's get that back in the box. Let's get the box out of here. We won't deal with that. We're already pretty long as it is. This one looks good. I love it with the steely wheels on there. Just says Land Rover Trophy on the side. It is uh, all metal, so it is pretty heavy. You can see this one was put in the plastic a little bit rough. Side mirror's a little bit off, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully it'll work its way back out. Nice big brush guard on the front. Looks good. Its details are pretty nice. The headlight looks like it's crooked, but I promise you it's not. That's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit crooked. Maybe a little bit crooked, um, which is kind of weird because uh, Tarmac's usually really, really good uh, with their quality. I get that to focus a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, but this is a pretty good one. does have a uh, spare tire on the back. And then it does say Land Rover on there as well. So not a bad one. Not a bad one. Looks pretty good. La integrated ladder on the side. A little bit of silver print for the top as well. So we'll throw that guy down there as the Premio. So there you go. That is Diecast Hall number 48. Uh, pretty big one. A lot of basic stuff. But uh, it's, been, it's been pretty slow. It's been pretty slow. Not a lot out there to uh, scoop up right now. Uh, but there's always plenty online, obviously. So we're going to roll out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching that all. We'll catch you next time on Level M. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you all. Peace.